to be here. Um, I have to get all the nervous jitters out, you know. It feels like it's the first time. It's not, but it definitely feels like it because it's been so long. But I love you too, Dad. My name is Amaryllis Rivera, and I am here to give the word today. I'm so excited. Um, I want you guys to stand with me because, you know, I watch like all these preachers and they're like, I want you to stand for the reading of the word. So Amaryllis is bringing out her preacher. It was her birthday yesterday. I turned 32 years old. Yes. So I'm so excited. But um, I want to read this and then we're going to get into this message. Yes, baby. Okay. <clears throat> Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no weekend war that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Let's pray. Dear God, we commit the next 20 minutes, because it's probably going to take me like 10, but I'm going to try to go for a 20. <laughs> God, I just want you to speak through me, God. Lord, I want to empower the people in this house to know how to fight their battles, God. And we already started doing that during worship, God, because I know that's how we fight our battles. It's in your word. It's in worship. It's when we're calling out to your name, God. So we give you the next couple of minutes, God, and we say, have your way. Speak through me, oh God, and may your words be communicated. Please take me out the picture, and I just pray that it's you speaking. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. So, we're going to be talking about weapons today, so I want to know what weapons do you want to bring to the battle? So I don't know if you guys have ever seen, there's a show on Netflix called Forged in the Fire. You have? Okay, so in this show on Netflix, um, they actually make weapons. And so the way that they make these weapons is not... In my mind, I thought that like a knife or a sword, things like that would be created with um, like computerized, you know? But on the show, they legit have to take a piece of steel and they heat it up to about 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. So it gets very hot. And because it's that hot, um, they're able to beat it with a hammer, and that's what they do. So they have like three hours to be able to create the weapon that they're supposed to make. Let's say the weapon is a spear they're going to be making, and they will sit there. And I mean, the way that they sweat, because they're by fire, right? And they're beating it, and I was amazed because they put in the work. It's not computerized, it's not made by, it's made by their hands right? And so even in this verse, I want to go back to, it says, take everything that the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials. So we're going to talk about a couple different materials that we're going to need to use to make weapons. And it's so funny because I feel like I am a lover, not a fighter. I've never been in a fight before. So Kevin had to school me. He's like, first of all, you need to put your hair up. So he was like, you should put your hair up. I'm, like, I'm not preaching with my hair up. I did my curls. They're staying down. And I got to take off my earrings. And I was like, well, I never wear earrings. I was totally going to wear my Melina to shout out Jenny for her earrings. But of course, I didn't wear mine because I never wear earrings problem but it's okay I'm ready for this battle um and then he also told me that I need to shut off my youtuber voice and I need to be aggressive so I'm gonna try my best to be fierce and strong and give it all I got because that's the kind of weapons that we're gonna be creating right so um I want to go back into the the passage so we're reading so you guys know in Ephesians 6 10 to 12 I'm reading the message version so let's keep reading on verse 13 and it says be prepared you're up against far more than you can handle on your own let's stop right there he 
already told you you can't do it by yourself. And yet we always trying to do it by ourselves. He said, be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help that you can get. He's like, I'm here for you. I got you. Take all the help. I'm your help, right? Our comforter. Take all the help that you can get. Every weapon that God has issued so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. That's what he wants for us. He wants us to be able to use this weapon and continue to stand while we're shouting. He's like, I'm not saying that you're supposed to have it together. I'm saying you're going to be shouting, right? You're going to be using your voice. And we're going to talk about that weapon later. But he's letting us know that we're going to be standing, right? Because we know the end of the story. And I feel like I've been hearing that everywhere. The end of the story is we win. Right? So if we know that, then we just need to learn how to sustain it, right? We need to learn how to outlast the things that come against us, right? So here are some of the weapons that he has given us. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. Talk about some direct instructions that the Lord has given us. I was so excited when I read this. I'm like, I don't need to preach. Your word says everything. I'm just going to read what it says. <laughs> um, God's word, and here's another one. God's word is an indispensable weapon. And I didn't list it as one of the weapons because it's a given. Everything that we talk about on this stage is something that we've got from God's word. His word is indispensable. That means that you can't take it away. That means it's here and it's something that you can use. Weapon number one is his word. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. What is that? Us praying, us communicating, us talking, giving it to the Lord. That is so key. And I, I'm going to go back to that. Um, prayer is essential on this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirit up so that no one falls behind or drops out. I love that. We're going to actually talk about that a little bit later. But I want you guys to think of moments in your own life that you need weapons, right? Life is hard. And there is a verse we're going to read in a little bit that it talks about that. But we have to understand and know that we have what it takes. You have been given the tools that you need to get through the hard times. The word forge itself, it also means to create. And I want you to, I want you to know that you have what it takes, right? And I thought about my own personal life, right? with back-to-back -back hits, right? So um, there's a lot of things that, and I, they said it earlier, it has been a hard 2022, right? We already started and everybody in the world got COVID at the same time. Like, I'm not sure how that happened, right? Well, obviously we probably touched each other. But you know what I'm saying? Like, we already had to start off with a fight. And I feel like even me trying to prepare, I was supposed to speak three weeks ago. But it never happened because there were things that caused us not to be able to have service. I'm like, already we're trying to fight. Already some the enemy's trying to come against what we're trying to do, right? Because we were all trying to start the year right. We wanted to fast. We wanted to dedicate this time to the Lord. And literally, Avon, so I have a four-month-old baby. He has been, oh, that's her godson, according to her. She's labeled herself God mommy. I'm not saying poppy. Um, <laughs> um, he has been sick for a month and a half. And so it started with bronchial colitis. Then he got better. Then he got it again. Then he got better and he got it again. This time it was pneumonia. And I have been so exhausted, right? I can only imagine. And that's just my struggle. I can only imagine what other people are going through where they feel like every two seconds they're getting a blow. They're getting hit from left and right of things that are going on. And I personally have felt like I've been trying to overcome, 
right? Like, oh, I'm just, I want to get over this. I know that if I get over this, if I get through this, it's going to be better. And yes, that's true. But I want to encourage you with what the word says. So in John 16, 33, it says, and everything I've taught you is so that peace, which is in me, will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, look, here's the Lord. He's telling us, you will experience trouble and sorrow, but you must be courageous. And I feel like that's what God is trying to infuse us with. He's trying to infuse us with courage. He doesn't want us to stay stuck in those areas that we always get defeated because that's what the enemy does. He gets us in our weakest points because he knows what we struggle with. He knows where our battles lie. And I feel like God is saying, but be courageous because I have conquered the world. He's like, I did it. That means you can do it. And, and last week when, when Kevin had said, my husband, when he had said that, that really stuck with me last week. God trusts you. He trusts you because he's like, if I can do it, you can do it too. Why? Because he's living inside of you. Why? Because you have the Father on your side. Because the counselor is in our hearts, right? If we say that we are believers and if you are not a believer yet, this is going to be your day. You're going to be able to call yourself a believer and be able to say, I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me. I have the counselor who's whispering in my ear where I need to be and where I need to go and who I need to be talking to. Um, <clears throat> sorry. No, you're fine. Thank you. Um, <laughs> this leads me to my first point is rest and peace are a weapon. And it says it right, like, ever so clearly in that verse. I have taught you this so that you can have peace, which is in me, and you will get, and that will give you conf great confidence as you rest in me. And that's even one of the, if we go back to the, the verse, right, it was truth, righteousness, peace. Peace is there. That's a weapon. Faith and salvation. And so sometimes I feel like it's hard for us to experience peace. And it's hard for us to be put in a place where we feel that comfort, right? Where we feel peace that surpasses all understanding. And there's a verse in Philippians, and I didn't write this down, but in Philippians um, 4, 7, right? It says, don't worry about anything, but through prayer and supplication, make it your requests known to God. So how do we experience peace? How do we get peace? By prayer. How do we get peace? By laying every burden, every, every hurt, every pain, laying it at his feet. Because personally, all I've seen is anything that I've held onto and harbored in my heart and I didn't give it to God, that's why I didn't experience peace. Because your mind is full of worry. Your mind is worried about what's next or what's to come or the what ifs or what, what's going to happen. And so all those questions don't allow us to enter into that state of peace, right? Because we're not giving it to God. We're not taking it. The moment that that, that worry or that anxiety, right, those things come to our mind, lay it at his feet immediately. That's a tool. That's a trick. Pastor George taught me that. He's like, you don't hold on to the things that burden you. Because then what happens? You overthink. Your mind festers, it grows, and it becomes something else. But if we're immediate with giving it to God and not holding on to it, we're able to walk in peace all the time. Who wants that? I do. Thank you, Norma. <laughs> She's like, me. Um... Oh, look, I wrote, sometimes I feel like we deprive ourselves of the one thing that gives us strength, right? We deprive ourselves from talking to the Lord and actually laying those cares at his feet because we feel, because we hold on to it. I mean, it's not doing anything in our hearts anyway, so why not just give it away, right? Because this is, this is interesting too. Worry definitely robs me of joy. 
And I know for me that I must get better at laying it at his feet. And it was funny because I felt like I wanted to go in about resting. But when I tell you that that is something that the Lord has been consistently trying to teach me, and I don't get it because I'm stubborn and hard-headed. Like, I even yesterday was um, my birthday, and so Amanda came over, and I'm trying to get ready. I still hadn't done my hair, and she was like, I can take care of Catalea. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, I have to get her dressed. I have to do this. I have to. The help was there, and I'm stuck on, oh, my gosh, I have so many things that I have to do instead of receiving and allowing someone else to like you know what maybe I needed a five minute break and I probably should have sat down and I probably would have been able to recuperate my brain you know but that's something that I know that I'm struggling with so one thing I'm gonna be able to preach about rest because I know that that's something that the Lord is calling us to to be able to rest be in his presence being okay with the chaos and knowing that he's gonna take care of it and it's not something I have to worry about Amen. So um, here's the the next weapon that I want us to talk about. Um, And I remember that I had reached a point, so I just gave birth. So anytime I preach, I feel like I always talk about my birthing experience because it's always traumatic and something memorable. It really is. But the last time when I I had Avon, my four-month-old, all I kept saying the whole time is, I don't want to do this anymore. And that was, that was the spirit that I was carrying around. Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. This is so hard. Can he just come right now? Can it just happen? Like, I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. And this is where I feel like community is our weapon. And I love that that's even been something that we've been posting about today, specifically because our community is our weapon. God has allowed us to be able to do life together so that we can support one another, right? And so in that room, I remember I'm shouting that, oh, I can't do this anymore. But there is my husband and my doula, Nirene, supporting me, loving me, encouraging me. And sometimes you need that. Because you don't believe in yourself a lot of the times. And I think we're so fickle as people because we doubt what we're capable of. But we were created for those kinds of things, right? We, as women, we were created to birth. And I'm here like, I can't do this. God is like, I made you to do that. Like, what you mean you can't do it? But that's what it feels like when you're in so much pain or when you're in so much agony. You just, you just can't break through. But when there's people around you that believe that you can break through, I want to read this verse to you because I feel like this is something that I want to strive as a friend. And if you feel like you want to be a better friend, Proverbs 16, 24, it says, Nothing is more appealing than speaking beautiful, life-giving words, for they release sweetness to our souls and inner healing to our spirits. The power of our words. The power of us being able to encourage and build that community and support one another. I think that that's something that God is calling us to. And it's a conjoined weapon, right? Because we're trying to fight these battles, but I promise you, you are not fighting that battle alone. And that is not what God has called you to do. Um, But then I also feel that there are pains and there's despair that a friend isn't enough. Right? Because we get to that point, like, okay. And if you ask Norma, Norma's my best friend, she'll always say, Oh, I'm just so tired of telling you the same thing that I'm going through. Right? But we get like that. We feel like, Oh my goodness, I'm constantly going through something. And I'm, how is my friend supposed to support me through this? You don't need a friend, you need the Lord. Right? Because your friend can do but so much. But. When we use this weapon, and this is um, the next weapon, praying in the spirit, that is where, that is where it's at, right? It's a call to enter into his presence. And so praying in the spirit is um, something that I even experienced while I was in labor. While I was in pain, the only thing I can utter was speaking in tongues. 
And it, it just felt like there was so much inside of me that I couldn't even talk about it. I couldn't even, I couldn't even um, let the pain, the pain felt so great that it was distracting to me that I felt like the only thing that was going to get me through was just talking to the Lord. So I'm there speaking in tongues. And, and that's why I feel like God has shown, like, the weapons that we have are so accessible to us when you tap in. And if it's your first time in church and you're, like, speaking in tongues, we're there already. I promise you that these are giftings that God has given you. And you could be walking with the Lord for 20 years or it's your first time. The gifts are available to you. The Lord wants to allow you to experience these things. Because, why? Because they're the gifts that he has given you when we've accepted him. Right? Here is something that I read um, and I'm reading this book called The Hannah Anointing. And the way she described it was so beautiful. Praying in the spirit is a weapon. Fervent prayer releases supernatural strength. So when you're able to pray fervently, that's coming from the deepest part of your soul, right? Um, praying in the spirit is a vital part of spiritual strength because it releases self-edification and builds up your faith. So it doesn't have anything to do with you trying to speak it to somebody else. This is literally between you and and the Father. This is not for anybody else. This is between you and God. Praying in the Spirit turbocharges your faith in God and keeps you in the love of God. And that, I think, is so beautiful that we get to experience that with him, right? So I encourage you, in, in 1 Corinthians 14, 4, it says, the one who speaks in tongues advances his own spiritual progress, while the one who prophesies builds up the church. So you guys were able to witness that when pastor was up here prophesying to the worship team, that was him building up the church, right? But if you saw me over here in this corner, I'm speaking in tongues because I'm trying to get my my faith amped up. I'm trying to get that Jesus going inside of me, right? And sometimes you need that help. I don't know about you, but you can sometimes walk into a worship service and you're looking around like, what's going on? Why is everybody going crazy? Like, what are they feeling? What are they experiencing? Dive in. Just, I think that when you open up your heart and you allow yourself to experience that, you're able to see what they see and feel what they feel. And it's a gift. And it's something that the Lord wants you to use because it's a weapon. Because there will be days in your life where you're going to experience pain. And it may not be a physical pain. Maybe it's a spiritual. Maybe it's emotional. But there's pains in our lives. And I feel like the Lord is saying, and I've called you to pray. I've called you to be able to use those things, activate that inside of you, your prayer life, the way you talk so that you can see God moving in your life. Um, when you know the weapons you have access to, you're not shy to use them in times of needs. It's truly a pause to worship our Father. And so the next weapon I feel like we need to activate and forge in the fire might make you feel uncomfortable, but it's a shout. A shout. Our shout. It's a weapon. And we're going to shout later today. I promise you we are going to shout and we're going to get it out. Because I, I really feel like the Lord wants to activate these things inside of us. We can't be scared. We, got, we have to take courage like the, like the Lord has said in his word. Be courageous. Um, it was cool because I watched, there's this series on Disney Plus where Will Smith goes into the earth. And so there's a part of it where he's hanging out with this, um, with a blind guy. He's blind, but, you know, his hearing is enhanced. So I learned this from that show, and it's that sound is movement. And things move into place when they're spoken out loud. That is how powerful our authority, like Pastor was saying earlier, that we have, right? It's in our shout. And as the body of Christ, we cannot stay silent anymore. I think we've already reached the point in our walk with God where being quiet isn't enough. 
and we have to do more. And doing more means doing our part. And so that's why we're activating this weapon of shouting. Um, there's this story I had read in the Bible. I'm like, I wish I had so much time. We could read it together. But on your own, if you want to, um, in the book of Exodus, it's Exodus 19. And it talks about when Moses met with with um, with God on Mount Sinai. This was right before he got the Ten Commandments. And so what was interesting and what sticks out to me still, as I've read it so many times, was the part when God was like, I want to show them that, I want to show the people that are following you that God, that I'm real and that I am the one that's giving you the direction that you need and I am the one that's guiding your life. So he allowed them the opportunity to sit at the bottom of the mountain. He's like, it's so holy, you can't even touch it, right? He was like, this is not, this is not something, like, he was like, but I'm going to come and reveal myself to these people. And so while they're there, he asks Ma uh, Moses to come ascend the mountain so he can talk to him. And so mountain, um, Moses goes up the mountain, and there's a big cloud that ascends. So everybody's watching this. They're seeing this happen. They don't, they don't have the opportunity to be able to go to the actual part where Moses was because Moses was very special. <laughs> and he had a calling that he was supposed to lead these people. But the Lord wanted to make sure that they understood that they were that he was real and that Moses was being led by the Father, and so on. Um, Exodus nineteen nineteen it says this: as the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and God thundered his reply. Imagine being in that space where you're on the bottom of the mountain, Moses is at the top, you know something is happening up there, and all you hear is thunder, and that's the voice of God. Whoa. <laughs> right. But what was interesting and what keeps sticking out to me is that when he shouted, when they blew, so a ram's horn, horn is called the shofar. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a shofar. I was going to ask to borrow one, but then I was like, then they would ask me to blow it, and I'm not blowing a shofar. <laughs> but this is an instrument that they would use when they were introducing the king. And to this day, we use it because for the second coming, when Jesus comes back for us again, it's supposed to represent that the Lord is coming back for us, right? So it's that shout, it's that cry, it's that loud noise that we're able to make. And that is what activates the strength that we need to get through our tough times. And I personally feel that there is, um, there's a cry that creatives and so this is me being prophetic. While I, was, while I was doing this teaching, I felt like God was highlighting to me people who are creative. So creatives means anything, to create. If you create something, then you are a creative, right? It doesn't have to be a singer. Like, you're creative, you're a writer, you're a teacher, you're creative. When you use your mind, you're being creative, right? And I really feel like there is a sound that needs to be released. And I affirm the creatives in the room to do what you know how to do. You will create to the measure that you pour out. Um, and then I want to read this verse because... I think it's really important for creatives to understand because a lot of times when you're creative, you hold things in. You keep it like, oh, I'm so good at this. I don't want people to, you know, then they're going to bite me or they're going to try to be like me. And I really feel like this is the place where our creatives need to be. In Luke 6.38, it says, give generously and generous gifts will be given back to you. Shaken down to make room for more. Abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflowing measure that it will run over top. The measurement of your generosity becomes the measurement of your return. 
Be generous in your creativity. Be generous in the way that you spend your time with people, the way that you interact with others, the way you make others feel loved. That's what we're called to, I really feel. Look at, um, it's okay to give of your time and talents. The reward in heaven are greater than what the world will ever offer you. And so I think that a lot of times, We'll hold it because I'm like, ain't nobody paying me for this. Nobody's paying me to do this. But God is like, that's that's not why I gave you the talent so that you can reap a reward here on this earth. You've been given that talent so that other people can see my glory through you. That's why I gave you that talent, you know. So I really feel like there's such a call for the creatives to step out and just do it. Don't worry about what you're going to get in return because the Lord is going to give you that return. He already knows what you're going to get for what you're doing. You're just going to do it. And that's why I feel like your creativity is a weapon. The season of comparison is over. Don't shortchange yourself. Don't say I'm only as good as. You are more than enough. You have what it takes to create. Sometimes we stay so fixated on the lack And if onlys, that we don't see what we already have. We have to get out of our heads. We have to get out of ourselves. You've been gifted and have to live your life accordingly. Your creativity is a weapon. I also believe that we have to be open so that our faith can be challenged, right? Because with creativity also comes stepping out, right? And when you step out then you, you, you can shy back easily, right? You can feel like, oh, then oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And I really feel like God is calling us into a place of having faith that what you're doing is what he said you're supposed to do. Believe that what he's telling you is exactly where you're supposed to be. We have to. We have to get to a point where we just, we trust him, right? Because, and this is, faith was one of the things that was also listed And that is our weapon. Um, Here, this is something um, that my husband had told me, and I feel it right now, is the testing that we go through is what builds our faith, right? If If you haven't been tested, then you can't be trusted. And that's something I've really felt for a long time. I think I said that the last time I spoke. If we're not tested, then how is anyone going to trust the validity of what has happened in your life, right? I'm on stage telling you, these are the weapons that you need. These are going to help you through the tough times. And when I go through the tough times, if I don't whip these out, then what's the point of me talking about them and sharing them, right? If I'm like, pray, that's what's going to give you peace. Or I don't know, whatever else I'm saying up here. (laughs) You know, like we have to be able to get to that space where we're able to say, I've been tested and that's why I can be trusted. That's why I'm uncomfortable and that's why things are changing in my life because they have to, right? Because when, we're, when, we're, when we take a risk and we're scared, right, we do it anyways, we're able to see the fruit in that. I, I want to implore you guys to take ownership of your giftings. We sabotage ourselves by giving up and not doing our best because we're so afraid to fail. We hold on so tight to things because we don't want to lose what was good in our life because we don't like to start over. It's okay to start over. It's okay if it didn't work out the first time and you're doing something new or something is happening, because I feel like that's, that's where we are right now. Your creativity, your uniqueness plays a part in the story, and that's why we get to do what we do here. Um, in 1 Timothy 4.15, it says, cultivate these things, immerse yourself in them. The people will see you mature right before their eyes. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. Don't be diverted. Just keep at it. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. That means that there are people connected to meeting God because of you. 
that's how important you are to this story, right? We do this every Sunday because we talk about that salvation. We talk about the Lord saving us. And we get to play a part in that story every time we bring someone here. Every time we encourage someone to have a relationship with God. That is the vital part you play in this. And that's your weapon. God saved you so that you can be able to tell others who can save them. Right? We have to activate these weapons. You've been tested because God just needed to make sure you wouldn't give up so easy. And sometimes I'm like, that's very harsh. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> Trying to make sure I can do this. But he's like, you're not doing it. It's me. It's me who's doing it through you. I'm the one who's there with you. Um, the last step in making a weapon. So I told you guys they heat it to, um, and I'm coming to a close. Um, when they heat the weapon, right, in the, a, piece, a block of steel, they'll heat it. It turns bright yellow. That means it's hot enough to be molded. They'll bang it. They'll smash it. They'll make it. And they continue to do this process for about two to three hours, right? So, but when they feel like their weapon is done, it's not just done. They have to quench it. And so to quench um, a weapon, it has to be put in oil. And so once it's put in oil and it comes out, it actually hardens the steel. And that's what solidifies it to make it one. And so I feel like it's time to quench our weapons in oil. Quench also means to satisfy one's thirst. And my mom put this up in the woman's chat today, um, Matthew 5, 6. And it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Are you righteous? Yes. That just means that you are right with God. That's all that means. If you are right with God, then he is ready to fill you. Because if you are hungry and you are thirsty for more of him, he wants you to use these. He wants these weapons to be something that happened naturally. You know what? I'm going to the house of the Lord today. It's, I, need, I need to be in community. I need to be around the people of God. I, I, I need, I need I, that, that's what I need right now. Or if you're, you know what? I, I need to go pray. I need to go talk to the Lord. This is, that, this is that weapon that I need to activate right now. I need to go be with my father because no one else is going to satisfy this but my father, right? We have to know his place in our lives. We have to know the part that he plays in what's going on in our lives. Um, what's another one I said? Our shout. And so I want you guys to stand because um, we're going to shout. <laughs> We are. We're going to shout. Because I feel like sometimes we stay so stuck in what is everyone going to think or they're looking at me. And we need to be undignified like David was when he let his clothes fall off because he was worshiping so hard. Like we have to get to that point, right? We want to see revival. We want to see the supernatural. This year is a sign of wonders. I feel like there's power that's coming. There's authority that the Lord, but our part is we need to shout. We need to know that our voice is a part of the solution, right? Us being in this atmosphere, in this spirit, we, we have to play a part in this, right? If you're, if you're creative, I would love you to come up to the front. Um, it doesn't have to be a public creative thing. I don't, it could be a private creative thing. But I want you to come up because I really feel like we want to pray for you. Because when you're creative, you're able to do things that God did. The ability to be like God is to create, right? And if we are going to create something new this year, if you're like, I want to create a new lifestyle. I want to create a house of prayer. <laughs> That's what I want. I want my house to be a house of prayer. I, I want to I wanna see, see my family 
here. If these are things that you've been calling out, I feel like the Lord is saying, I want to meet you. I want to speak to you. I want to give you clear instructions on how to proceed. I want to give you clear directions in which way to go. And that's where I feel like the moment that we are in right now. Let's quench our thirst in this place. Let's not stay stuck where we are because we want to move forward. This God gave me this analogy and it was of a stairs, right? This is, let me go down. This is a step, right? So for so long, I've been walking around on this level. And it's cool, but I feel like the Lord is saying the only way you're going to be able to move forward is by going up. We have to be able to move up. He's like, we're not going to keep the same. Because down there on that floor, there's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of insecurities. There's a lot of inadequacies. And if we're going to be able to see the Lord move in our lives, we have to move up. Because the thinking is not the same. On the next level, we think, this, we think different. We think like the way that the Lord has put in our hearts to think to speak loving kindness to each other, to be able to see him do the things that we know that he's more than capable of doing. So let's just pray. Mighty God, put your hands out like you're going to receive a gift. These are your children. Each and every person that is in this room or even under the sound of my voice in the live, these people are creative. You have created us to create, God. So I just pray right now that you would activate in the supernatural, God, that you would activate these men and women to be able to do what you have called them to do, God. Lord, their hands are ready for work. Their hands are willing and ready to do what you have called them to do, God. We're going to activate these weapons. We're going to be a part of our community. God, we're going to trust you for the impossible. Lord, we're going to speak in tongues and know that you're going to do what only you can do because our words are finite. Lord, we're going to shout. We're not going to stay silent anymore, God. We're not going to let everybody pass us by. God, we're going to do what you have called us to do, God. Quench the thirst in this room. Quench the hunger in this room. Satisfy every heart, every mind, oh God, that they would be able to see you and hear you for who you truly are, God. Lord, we are yearning for more of you, oh God. But fill us up because we are empty, God. We've been empty. The pain that we've endured, the sorrows that we've endured, Lord, they have depleted us completely. And we feel defeated. But God, we know that you are more powerful because you have conquered the grave. You have conquered death so that we can stand. room would stand in faith, stand in your love, stand knowing that they are more than able to do exceedingly above what they can think or imagine, because you have created them to create, you have created them to move mountains, you have created them to do things that they never saw done before, because we serve a God who does the impossible. We serve a God that does things that the world has never seen because that's how good you are. Fill up your people. Fill up your people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
worship, right? This is our shout, it's a weapon, right? So glad you can join us. My name is George Caban. I am the senior pastor 
here at Ignite Church. And if you was impacted this morning by the message and want to take your relationship with God to another level, I want to give you three quick steps that you can apply right now. Number one, prayer. You have the ability to commune with God. Start your praying with God. It starts right in your house. It starts wherever you're at. Number two, come visit us. We will love to meet you in person and you get to see the other community of believers. It's something awesome and the synergy is crazy when you're in one mind and one language. And so experience what it looks like to be in person. And number three, join Growth Track. What is Growth Track, George? Okay, Growth Track is where you get to hang out with me for an hour and I get to share the heart of the church, how we started, where we're going, what God is doing, and how you could be part of what God is doing. And so I'm so excited to meet you. Can't wait to see you. Be blessed.